back running again, and now you're back in the running state. And one of the, the key things about this one is, uh, wait for it, while you are suspended, your application might be killed. So you have to assume that when you go into the suspended state, so after you've been paused, you have to assume that your process is going to be killed. Now, we don't always kill processes. We do it if we need the resources being used by your application. So say someone is in your app, and then they switch to calculator. We will give you a pause event. We will suspend your app. The user uses the calculator. And calculator doesn't really use that much memory. So we don't need to free up the resources used by your app. The user exits calculator. They go back to your application. We resume you. You're right back where you started. But assume that instead of calculator, they ran the web browser. And then they ran email. And then they ran calendar. And then they ran a bunch of other stuff. Eventually, we're going to need the memory that your application is using. And that's when we will kill your process. And so the key thing here is to use pause and resume to make that uh, as undisruptive to the user as possible. So in the pause state, what you do is save state for future use. So you re remember where you are in your application. Um, you uh, get ready to be suspended. And this is really where the page system also helps. Because if you build your application into these discrete pages, and you make each page kind of stateless, um, it makes it really easy for you to pause your application, because there's nothing really to do. Each app knows what it needs from its, its query string that it was given, but it doesn't really need any other state saved. So it can actually be really easy to save state. And then when the resume event happens, you load that state back in again, and you're right back ready where you left off. And the whole point of this, and again, it's part of our smart multitasking, is that the user should never know what happened. Right? We do this, we, we pause you, you write state out, we resume you, you load it back in again. So the user doesn't know that we killed your process. Right? To them, there are, they actually are switching between applications. They don't need to know the implementation detail that sometimes they're in memory, and sometimes they're not. And if you're kind of freaking out, saying, oh, oh wow, what about background processing? Well, we didn't, I'm not covering it soon, because we already covered that. Um, and the other thing is, is that Istvan will be talking about this more uh, tomorrow. So if you've got Istvan's um, architecture talk uh, tomorrow, he'll talk in more detail about pause, resume, and switching between applications. Um, and now I'm back to where it let me, left me off before. So let me forward through all of this. And again, I really apologize for this, this auto-forwarding through the presentation. Well, there's a lot of bills in here. <laughs> Almost there. OK, so key takeaways. These are the three things I mentioned at the start, and the three kind of things that, if you take anything away from this other than don't let PowerPoint auto forward, uh, they are one, applications are built using pages. And if you structure your application in pages, you get easy navigation, you get integration with the back key, and it makes your life easier when you have to pause and resume your application, because your application is siloed into these little, little kind of buckets of, of, of functionality. The other next one is that a UI in, in Windows Phone is really clean and simple. If you have a strong brand and you want to go ahead and make your buttons bright red and flash and do all that kind of stuff, that's great. Silverlight can do that. Please go ahead and do that. We're not saying you must have square, transparent, black and white buttons. We're not saying that. What we are saying is, if you, if you want to look like the default applications and you don't have a good reason for having flashing red and green buttons, please stick with the default UI, because that will match what the user's expectation is, and it'll keep the user experience up. And then finally, the location service and the notification service that we have can really be used in your app to help build a better user experience. It can be location aware, and it can notify users of important updates, even when your application isn't running. So further, some further information, there's my blog. Um, as I mentioned, I will be uploading my fake location service and some of the other code from today. Um, Developer.windowsphone.com, I'm sure. Anybody downloaded this stuff yet? A few of you. Um, there's also live.visitmix.com, where you can watch recorded talks. Uh, you can watch this one again if you really want to. You can watch some of the other ones. Um, Seema's performance talk is next, and it's in this room. Someone, I think the, the, the conference says it's in a different room, but it's actually in this room. So if you want to learn about performance, stay here. Um, Istvan's talk tomorrow is another good thing. And anybody heard of Charles Petzold? Okay. He's writing a book on this stuff, so uh, when that comes out, you should go buy that. 
Oh, download it free. Sorry. OK. So call to action. Firstly, install the tools. I didn't see many hands up, so hopefully you're all going to, when you get home, you're going to install the tools. You're going to start coding. And then you're going to give us a ton of feedback. So tell us what's good about this platform. Tell us what's bad about this platform. And tell us what's really, really painful. What do we need to do to really enable you to get, uh, you know, make app development super simple for you? And then one final thing. Um, there is an opportunity for you to uh, participate in either a usability study or a focus group. So if you talk to Susan, who's standing over there, waving right now by that light over there, or you send her email, um, she can sign you up to be on one of these usability studies or on one of these focus groups. Um, please fill out the session evaluation forms. It helps us make the conference better. It helps us get better. And uh, thank you all for staying here for part two. Thank you. And of course, questions. Is the mic on? Yes, I can hear you on the mic. Oh, can you hear? OK. So one of the three main buttons is the search button. Is mm -hmm. there app-specific uses for that search button, or should it always take you to being? Uh, yeah, the question's around the search button. Um, right now, there is no application integration with the search button, so it will, it will take you to being. OK. Second question is, um, how much time is there between the pause notification and when your application is suspended? How, did, how does that work? Uh, so question, do I need to repeat the question? Can people hear the question? OK, um, so we haven't, we have, we're still tuning that. We haven't finalized the, the delta between pause and, and stop. I'll take one from the front and back, front and back, so front okay. and back. Uh, Victor Larson from Avanard. Uh, I have two questions. First, uh, a silly question. No such thing. <laughs> OK, uh, so we have four main color themes. Uh, is there an ability to customize? Uh, I know I have a few friends who'd like a pink color theme, for example. Uh, so there's nothing. We're not saying anything else about themes right now. There's four on the emulator today. Um, that's all we're saying right now. OK, second question. Uh, you talked about the location service. Is this for the US, or uh, can I access it in Sweden? No, both, both location and push are worldwide. So okay. wherever Windows phones will be sold, you'll be able to use those services. Great, thank you. You're welcome. I'll take one from the back. So. Hello. Uh, most of the things you talked about today are mobile specific, yet the message was that we can use the same code base for both web, silver light, and I mean web, mobile, and Xbox. How would all those API degrade on different devices? Okay, so the story is really that um, you, know, you can share your code, share your knowledge, and our, our, our message is really not that you write once and run everywhere, but you write your core code. And then you optimize for each of the experiences. So on the desktop, for example, you optimize for a mouse and a keyboard and a big display. On the phone, you optimize for you know, capacitive touch and accelerometer and stuff like that. So what we're really saying is your core logic and all the core services and stuff like that that isn't directly related to UI or input, or input specifically, goes across the three screens. But when it comes to input in particular and also some forms of output, it really is specific to the device, because you, know, you don't have a mouse on a phone, and you don't have an accelerometer on a desktop PC. So um, if you saw Sean's or Mike's talk, they had that, that same app running in the browser and in the, uh, in the emulator. All the core stuff just works. It's the stuff that's actually specific to the device that you do need to kind of rethink about and rewrite. Thank you. You're welcome. And Ferran Gallego from Code Factory. Nice Will you. location services provide functionality about looking for points of interest by category, by distances? Um, I do not know about points of interest. That would be a good question to ask in the, in the comments. Uh, I believe the Bing team is there. And, and the second question mm -hmm. is about the same. <laughs> root creation from A to B. There, there's no root creation in the APIs that I was showing. Oh. But uh, you should ask the Bing team in the, in the comments. OK, thank you. And 